you've been hearing about ovarian rejuvenation and are wondering if it's a legitimate way to delay menopause or just an expensive scam, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm breaking down the real science, the exaggerated marketing, and the outright false claims so you can be an informed patient and protect your wallet. My prediction is that in two years time, there will be a lot of hype and hope around therapies aimed to slow down ovarian aging. And if you want to help me debunk menopause myths and combat health misinformation, please watch this video until the end and share it. Your support makes a difference. For information on how ovarian aging impacts women's overall health span and well-being, tune in to this earlier video. Back to ovarian aging therapies. The growing interest in therapies for ovarian aging is driven by an aging population and workforce, as more women are seeking solutions to maintain their fertility, health and vitality during midlife and menopause. I'll help you navigate the landscape of emerging therapies like platelet-rich plasma, stem cells, nutritional supplements, and lifestyle interventions that are being studied to combat ovarian aging. First, let's talk about platelet-rich plasma or PRP therapy. Is it even a thing for rejuvenating ovaries? The answer is yes, but with caveats. This treatment involves extracting a concentrated solution of platelets from a patient's own blood which contains growth factors that aid regeneration and injecting it into the ovaries. The idea is that growth factors within PRP can stimulate ovarian function and potentially improve egg quality. Clinical studies and case series have reported some encouraging results, particularly in women diagnosed with diminished ovarian reserve or premature ovarian insufficiency or POI. These are conditions where women have fewer eggs than expected for their age or experience early menopause-like symptoms. Many studies indicate that intra-ovarian PRP injections may improve markers of ovarian function, such as FSH and estradiol levels, and increase antral follicle count. There have been reports of pregnancies in these patient populations following PRP treatment. However, it's crucial to understand the current limitations. Most of these studies are small, observational, and lack rigorous controls. While PRP appears to be safe, its exact mechanisms of action are not fully understood, and long-term safety and efficacy data are still lacking. Only a few randomized control trials exist, and their findings are not yet definitive. More extensive, well-controlled trials are needed before PRP can be routinely recommended as a standard treatment for ovarian aging. PRP is used in musculoskeletal medicine to treat osteoarthritis of the knee, but this does not mean the same safety and efficacy exists for ovarian aging. As an example, marketing hype. Think of your ovarian tissue like any other injured tissue be it a torn meniscus or a worn down joint. PRP provides the concentrated healing signals that the body needs to expair itself. Beware of this mechanistic fallacy in marketing hype. Your ovaries are not the same as your knees. Next, let's turn our attention to stem cell therapies, a frontier with immense potential. These treatments involve using various types of stem cells including autologous stem cells to potentially restore ovarian function with the most promising method through direct injections into the ovarian tissue or intravenously. Again, studies have often focused on women with POI or diminished ovarian reserve, aiming to restore ovarian activity and potentially increase chances of conception. The hope is that these cells can differentiate into new ovarian cells repair damaged tissue or secrete factors that support existing ovarian function. Early clinical trials and preclinical studies have shown promise. Some research suggests that stem cell-based approaches could restore ovarian function and even improve fertility outcomes in women with ovarian failure. The concept of engineered stem cell-based therapy, potentially aided by AI, is also emerging as a promising technique. Despite this exciting potential, stem cell therapies for ovarian aging are still in their nascent stages. Only a handful of clinical trials have been completed. Many more are still ongoing. The evidence for improved fertility outcomes in humans remain preliminary and significant ethical and regulatory concerns need to be addressed. As with PRP, long-term safety and efficacy data are crucial and currently limited. I'll also mention exosomes as these are molecules that can be derived from stem cells 
and currently multiple clinical trials have been conducted or are ongoing that explore this in diverse areas including cancer, regenerative medicine, autoimmune diseases, neurological disorders, and skin treatments. These studies highlight exosomes as promising agents for tissue repair, immune modulation, targeted drug delivery, and as biomarkers for diagnostic purposes. You might be exposed to beauty products containing exosomes that promise anti-aging effects. For example, if you hear that groundbreaking studies have proven that exosomes can reverse cellular aging and stimulate regeneration, now we can harness this proven power to directly target your ovaries and delay menopause or something to that effect, that's a red flag. Just because you can go down to Sasa and buy a packet of exosome moisture mask, it doesn't mean the science is solid for your ovaries. Watch out for misapplied evidence in marketing language. Finally, let's discuss the role of supplements and antioxidants in combating ovarian aging. Many over-the-counter supplements, particularly those rich in antioxidants like CoQ10, resveratrol, and melatonin, have been investigated for the potential to improve ovarian health. Out of these, CoQ10 seems to show the most benefit when used by women undergoing IVF treatment. The dose recommended was 30 mg a day for 6 months, and higher doses did not show any additional benefit. Oral resveratrol in retrospective studies of women undergoing IVF were 200 mg per day. It's important to note that supplementation was associated with a decreased pregnancy rate in humans, despite animal models showing protection from oxidative stress, the opposite of what you want. Melatonin at 3 to 6 mg showed modest benefits also in women undergoing assisted reproductive therapy. Other antioxidant results were widely variable and less beneficial than CoQ10. DHEA, an endogenous steroid hormone made in the adrenal glands, ovaries and brain, has also been studied in women undergoing IVF. They were prescribed 3 doses a day of 25 mg for 12 weeks prior to IVF in an RCT. Note that DHEA is a hormone and should be prescribed by your reproductive medicine specialist. As you can see, many of the studies using oral supplements are in women undergoing IVF. The theory is that these compounds help reduce oxidative stress, which is a key contributor to cellular aging, including the ovaries. No single supplement has been definitively proven to reliably reverse ovarian aging or restore fertility in large-scale randomized controlled trials. So, it's important to temper expectations. More rigorous research is needed to establish the true effectiveness and optimal dosage for ovarian health. To date, there are no clinical trials evaluating these supplements in healthy women. Remember to always speak to your doctor first before starting any new supplements in case of drug interactions and especially if you have an underlying medical condition. Don't fall for the naturalistic fallacy that something is safe just because it's natural. In conclusion, while there is significant interest and promising early results for PRP, stem cell therapies and various supplements in addressing ovarian aging, the evidence is not yet definitive. Many studies are small at pilot stages, are observational, or lack the robust clinical trials needed for widespread clinical recommendation. The mechanism of action are still being fully understood, and the long-term safety and efficacy data are largely absent. The field of ovarian aging rejuvenation is rapidly evolving, with ongoing randomized controlled trials expected to provide clearer answers in the future. For now, these therapies remain experimental, and any decisions regarding their use should be made in careful consultation with healthcare professionals, considering the current state of scientific evidence. Be warned, look out for the mechanistic and naturalistic fallacies in product or service marketing, and don't fall prey to the misapplication of evidence. Beyond medical therapies, our daily lifestyle choices play a significant, often underestimated role in ovarian aging. While genetics sets a baseline and we are not there yet in terms of reversing ovarian aging, research increasingly shows that healthy habits can help preserve ovarian reserve, while negative habits can accelerate it. Modifiable factors that accelerate ovarian aging include smoking, consuming a processed high sugar diet, chronic stress, and exposure to environmental pollutants. These elements increase oxidative stress, inflammation, and mitochondrial damage, all of which can hasten ovarian aging and reduce the quality of eggs. Conversely, protective lifestyle habits are associated with delayed menopause and better ovarian reserve markers. Regular physical activity, a balanced diet rich in antioxidants, and avoiding smoking and environmental toxins are key. And the evidence that smoking accelerates ovarian aging and early menopause is the strongest. 
Current smokers of 11 to 12 pack years had a four-fold risk of premature menopause and a three-fold risk of early menopause. Smoking durations of 15 to 20 years increase the risk of premature menopause by 15 times and early menopause by six times. This also applies to secondhand smoke. The risk being higher the more frequent and the longer the exposure, especially in women who have never smoked. This can lead to menopause occurring one to one and a half years earlier. Finally, calorie restriction and intermittent fasting, mostly in animal studies, suggests a potential to preserve ovarian reserve by reducing oxidative stress and maintaining primordial follicle pools. While direct evidence for delaying ovarian aging in humans through lifestyle alone is still emerging, these interventions offer broad health benefits and are low risk. For special populations like women with POI or polycystic ovary syndrome, lifestyle interventions including diet and exercise have shown promise in improving overall reproductive and metabolic outcomes, indirectly supporting ovarian health. So what are some practical tips? Add a serving of fruits and vegetables that are rich in antioxidants and whole grains. Engage in regular physical activity. Aiming for a mix of aerobic and strength training exercises. Maintain a healthy weight, as obesity is linked to increased oxidative stress, reduced pregnancy and live birth rates. Prioritize stress management techniques like mindfulness, music or yoga, and minimize exposure to environmental toxins, especially smoking and radiation. Avoid eating charred foods which contain advanced glycation end products or AGEs as these are linked to increase oxidative stress and reduce fertility. These simple yet powerful changes can contribute significantly to your overall health and potentially support ovarian longevity. You may want to work with a physician coach trained in lifestyle medicine for precise and personalized evidence-based information, assessment, and strategies so that you can avoid falling for the hype around menopause and healthy aging. If you found this information helpful and want to help me combat menopause misinformation, please share this video and the information you have learned with someone you know. Thanks for watching and see you next time.